Um, hi, everybody. So welcome to our um, another episode of our Stories of Scaling Up, um, where we'll be chatting with CEOs, founders, uh, business leaders of scaling companies. Um, it centers around um, the leaders' entrepreneurial journey so far and their aspirations for the company. Today, we're talking to Adam um, Mazzaferro. I hope I've got that right, Adam. Um, yep, right. Founder at Pay, founder of the Love Chain. I'm fascinated to find out what, to find out, find out what that is. Uh, a part of uh, mergers and acquisitions and advisory um, and managing director of Blue 5 Medical. So thank you. Thank you. Welcome, Adam. Thank you, Jonathan. Thanks for having me. So, given, um, why don't we just start by saying, what do you do? Uh, um, do you look yeah, so, so um, I, my background is uh, corporate law m and um, and was in private practice for around 15 years, um, big firms and so forth, um, and working in uh, corporate law, m and space, banking and finance, uh, law space, uh, advise, advising a range of clients, uh, whether it be banks, um, different financial institutions, um, uh, public companies, uh, private companies, international clients and so forth, uh, and, obviously, and also working on m and transactions. Um, and then I had a bit of a, a bit of a change and moved into um, uh, more uh, management CRO roles um, over the last few years. Um, and currently uh, am a partner in uh, EP Advisors, which is a boutique M and A corporate advisory firm based in Sydney and Melbourne, where we work on um, and work and act for clients and put together M and A uh, transactions. Uh, roll-ups and so forth, uh, usually in um, with an enterprise value of between five to 100 million. And further to that, I'm also the co-founder of two tech startups, uh, one being NatPay and the other being The Love Chain, which are currently um, uh, going to be going live fairly soon, which is very exciting for us. Right. And they're both, correct me if I'm wrong, they're both... Um, uh, focus on blockchain technology, is that right? Correct, yeah. So they're both focused on blockchain technology. AppPay is the first buy now, pay later blockchain crypto base platform in the world, um, but also allowing the usage of um, uh, fiat or normal currency, as people would know it as. So AUD or USD, whatever it is. Um, it's a little bit different. We um, basically, essentially, it's five different types of businesses rolled into one, you've got your buy now, pay later, you've got your payments system, you've got staking, you've got rewards, and you've got an e-commerce marketplace. Uh, we essentially, we reward our ecosystem uh, for making, for customers, for making their repayments within the agreed timeframes. And also in terms of merchants for successful transactions, uh, they also get rewarded as well uh, through our reward tokens and, and so forth. Okay. And the love chain? Love Chain is a social media platform, um, and it's actually the first social media platform in the world that allows a user to create their own NFTs from the content that they post, um, and essentially really empowers the users to uh, uh, really commercialize their usage on the platform. Um, the other social media platforms, they you're basically their content creator, um, and then they obviously monetize off all that. But with with the Love Chain, which is built around the number one hashtag across social media, which is hashtag Love. It's really a place for people to celebrate all the things and all the people that they love, but also at the same time, be able to commercialize their usage um, through that, mainly through um, uh, the NFT marketplace, or sorry, uh, being able to uh, mint their own NFTs from their content that they post, which they then can sell within their own NFT marketplace. Further to that, they actually also get rewarded for allowing us to use their content and privacy and personal information, um, which um, unlike other social media platforms, you they basically, um, uh, take you know use all that and monetize that in a big way. Uh, so we actually reward our users for allowing us to use that for advertising and marketing purposes, uh, and further um, for participating in certain uh, competitions, promotions on the platform, upload certain content on the blockchain. You also again uh, are rewarded uh, through our, um, our Love Rewards uh, token, which is uh, be then able to be used within the uh, Love Chain ecosystem. So I'm going to ask you to deep dive a bit more into that because I know there's lots of confusion out there about what all this means. So, yeah, like I'm a, a, a director of a superannuation fund, so I get I've now worked out that 
yeah, blockchain is different to cryptocurrency, which um, which is like as you mentioned, Australia dollar, US dollar, crypto, yeah. and then an NFT, a non fungible fungible token. Yeah. Right. So, could you just give you know, like a quick description? What's blockchain? What's crypto? What's an NFT? Like a couple of sentences only. Yeah, so blockchain, so basically blockchain is the technology. Crypto is what is cryptocurrency is a form of digital currency that is um, that can be uh, uh, blockchain technology is essentially sort of used to to, to create that. And then uh, um, uh, the NFT is a uh, is a non fungible token. So it's a token that can be used, but it's not fungible um, and can be used for look with not with NFTs. It's there's been a lot of craze around um, these, like apes and things like that. But it's really the technology behind them that that is the real power of them. Um, if you look at it from from a legal point of view, in terms of such like intellectual property, um, you're giving like for artists they could actually create certain contents like music and and whatever. And this is something that we're trying to um, bring into into the love chain is allowing artists to. Uh, create content with the, the NFTs, which they can then monetize and able to be able to like um, track the actual transactions that occur in terms of selling that art. So whether it be music, um, uh, design, and what have you, um, that they can then monetize and, and track it. And it's really the power behind um, NFTs, the technology of it, and also to do with contracts and so forth. That is really the um, the real benefit of, of NFTs. So for both crypto and NFTs, blockchain technology is the thing that makes it work. Is that is that correct? Yeah. It's like yeah. The base. yeah. Yeah. And yeah, to put that in perspective for, for our, you know, our listeners, um, the Australian Stock Exchange is implementing blockchain blockchain technology um, to protect the shares that we own. So it's yeah, a, yeah. yeah it, it's a technology that's going to change everything. And in, in the, at the super fund that I'm a director of, we're investigating blockchain technology to protect the um, the holdings of um, yeah, our clients, our investors. It's really um, we see it as you got the internet boom that we had back in the late '90s and early 2000s. This is and what we saw how that changed many things, whether it be commerce, then brought in obviously e-commerce and and other things in terms of the way we did business and emails, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but with blockchain and cryptocurrency and, and even NFTs to an extent, that we see that being a, a much larger um, disruptor, let's call it, in the way, whether it be business, the way governments do certain things, the way things are traced, the way things are um, tracked. Um, um, and we, we see that we're nowhere, we're nowhere near or we haven't even begun in terms of what can actually be done with this form of technology and, and how it's going to change things. And thank you, because you just, like you've explained it to me, and I'm sure there are lots and lots of people out there wondering what are these things. So at least we've got a bit of an idea now, so thank you. So listen, let's focus on one of the businesses, your choice. Um, yeah, I'd like to um, get an idea of, you know, uh, who is your core customer? Who is your the best customer that you would target and and how would you describe describe your customer? So you, you can pick one of the businesses. Um, yeah, um, I suppose <coughs> I can uh, talk about um, uh, talk about probably EP Advisors uh, initially and then probably touch on AppPay. But um, yep. um, EP Advisors is, it's really a coming together of, of um, uh, 11 advisors between Sydney and Melbourne that have that are experienced in the uh, um, the corporate world, but also have professional backgrounds, whether it be legal, um, accounting, banking, um, stockbroking, and, and so forth. But what makes it a little bit different is that we're all actually have been involved in businesses ourselves. We've started businesses, we've founded businesses, we've exited businesses. So we actually understand the challenges that um, business owners um, experience. We understand um, the, the challenges or, or sometimes even, even the fear that they face when they, they may want to either exit or they may want to scale up and having to bring in investors and, and whatever it might be. So we actually um, really are able to resonate with them and, and, and explain to them um, what the 
I suppose, the challenges are, but also um, appease them and, and comfort them in terms of, look, it's not that bad. This is what you, know, this is what you can do. And, and this is actually, it's of benefit to you to do whatever it might be. Um, and then obviously bring in also our, our, our professional um, experiences and, and, and backgrounds as well to, to assist that. Our ideal clients are essentially um, uh, uh, large family family businesses that, that really have started from humble beginnings that then grow to um, to be successful successful business. Some some of them even like household names around Australia, and and we we look at um, helping them um, understand where they may want to go ne- to next. And, and how to get there. Um, a lot of times it's, you know, they've really reached a, a point in, in the business's growth that they really need to bring someone in. And usually it's a lot of times a strategic partner um, that can help them then go to those next two, three levels to really, to really make a, a real, real dent in things. Um, the general size of the, the, the transactions um, in terms of an enterprise value are usually between five to 100 million. So we're talking about decent sized businesses here that are still largely, um, usually family owned, family run. Um, and they really, um, to be able to go to that next stage, we really prepare them. And then we look at bringing in, in um, through our networks, there'll be family officers, private equity, uh, large industry um, players, and even uh, large um, um, uh, high net worth individuals that are you know, specialised in a particular uh, sector or whatever it might be, and then when it comes to sectors, we're we're sort of sector agnostic, and that also comes back to our um, our diverse um, professional backgrounds and experiences in business as well. Um, we 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 have clients that are in food manufacturing, distribution, um, uh, sports and entertainment, um, we've had aviation. Um, so there's a whole ri- wide range of, of clientele. And business sectors or industry, sorry, that we that we deal in and transact in. Okay, great. It's interesting. It's um, you know, my clients are, uh, tend to be you know the two million up to about twenty five million. You know where, where I enter with them, and um, a lot of the time they're looking to position themselves, you know, for either an exit or an in- injection from a yeah. firm like yours. And um, what I find is that. They get to the stage where you know the, the DIY, the do-it-yourself model, you, know, you can only go so far, and then you need to bring in experts like you and, and and I um in to help them with the next the next step. It's um and you'll see in the in, in like twice this this week I've done an interview with um CEOs who've um either are looking for you um a service like yours or just um uh, raise money. So it's it's a, it's an interesting thing that's coming through at the moment. Yeah, yeah, that's um, um definitely a space where we we um, actually we saw there was a bit of a, a, a gap in the market, um, mm-hmm. in that you got your, like your your business brokers, and yep. then you got your your big four or five or six accounting firms and advisory firms, and there was there was a real gap in the market for that five to hundred mil enterprise value family founded businesses, still family run and so forth that really needed um, that comfort of wanting people that were experienced and had the professional backgrounds. Um, and experiences, but also weren't the high, like coming from the high corporate side of things. So we, mm. we, we we sort of cater to that that market, that mid 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 tier market. Yep. You want to just quickly cover AppPay as well? Yes, AppPay, like I mentioned earlier on, is the first um, buy now pay later uh, platform built on blockchain uh, technology, incorporating cryptocurrency and and then fiat or traditional currency. Um, but also, it's a it's a it's a, it's, a, it's it's essentially you know, our party, but it's also a lot different in what we're doing. Um, we we are um, uh, we've built it around a uh, an ecosystem where we actually reward our participants, and then whether that be through uh, the stakers, whether through be through the merchants, whether it be through through the customers, and the way that really works is um, uh, a customer will sign up, and they can. Um, obviously purchase something using the buy now pay later um, platform and they can then um, uh, once they make their repayments within the agreed timeline they will actually be rewarded with that pay reward tokens which they can then use within the app pay ecosystem um, they could also uh, stake them for, for, for a return or a yield um, further to that they can actually trade them because they will be listed 
um, and then also with our uh, with our merchants, they will also uh, be rewarded um, on um, on a, each successful transaction. Uh, to uh, based on the percentage value of that transaction, they will be rewarded in in that pay uh, reward tokens as well, which they can then use for promotional purposes. Um, they can use them for um, um, uh, in, in, you know, uh, enticing or marketing for, for new clients or new customers, um, and also they can use them within the ecosystem or, or um, trade them because they, they will be they will be listed. Um, further to that, it's also we've also got um, uh, it's, it's, it's a payment system, so you can actually just go in uh, through the uh, pay wallet, go to a store, and actually just buy a good, uh, purchase a good um, or a service. Um, using the crypto that's held in your wallet, um, and then the uh, merchant can accept it. This is not using the buy now, buy now, pay later function, but just purely uh, to to purchase something. And that that merchant can actually accept um, uh, the payment in either a stablecoin, or they could also um, accept it in um, in fair currency as well if they want to, because we actually have swapping mechanisms built into the protocol that allows us to swap from crypto into into fair or or the one crypto into a stable coin or whatever it might be. Okay. Um, so that's that's what we're and, and when do you, when do you, when do you look at when are you looking at launching that? We're looking at launching in um, August September this year. Um, it will be initially Australia, New Zealand, and North America. We've had a lot of interest out of um, or, or many parts of the world, but we that's our uh, roadmap. And then we will be moving into UK, Europe as well, um, also the GCC region, where there's been a lot of interest because we don't charge. We don't actually charge interest, which actually, um, uh, given we don't charge interest, actually means AppPay complies with Islamic financing rules. Yep. Um, so we, uh, we've had a lot of interest there. Um, and then obviously our Southeast Asia as well, where there's um, starting to be a real growth in the buy now, pay later space. Okay, great. So listen, can I bring us back to more general? Yeah, we've just saw, come, you know, we're all coming out of the pande pandemic. What are some of the uh, things that you, actions you implemented in your businesses in the pandemic that you've decided to keep uh, remain part of business going forward? Um, a lot more a lot more virtual meetings, um, mm -hmm. which is can be a good thing and also can be a, be a negative. Um, it's I think it's a good thing when you actually already have a, a relationship or a rapport with the parties that you're dealing with. Um, but I see the virtual meetings being a negative in terms of when you're starting to, to wanting to build a rapport with the with the other party. I think that's still in person is still the best way to 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 initially at least build that that relationship. Um, some other things, um, a lot more um, uh, focus, a lot more on the uh, I suppose digital um, systems um, and um, we look. The way we were operating, this is more with EP advisors, was was still was very even before pre um, um, COVID times was very um, digital focused. So it was all pretty much digital um, systems um, and so forth. So we, I suppose, it's really just maintaining that and, and, and building off that. And um, yeah, once again, it was a bit difficult because we're talking about three different countries, companies. So. What's the future look like? And what do you see as the main challenges going forward? Um, I think the future is, if I look at the sort of businesses, the future is is bright. And that's especially given that what we've experienced in the first six months or so of this year. Um, in terms of EP advisors, we've been very busy with uh, a lot of uh, new clients have been engaged, a lot of uh, uh, Deals have been um, uh, negotiated. Um, you know, a lot of the deals that we do, they, they take six to twelve months. So you need to sort of plan and prepare for that. Um, we, um, but we we do see that there's a lot of activity in the space in that mid tier space anyway in the in, in the mid tier M and A space. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of our our our, our tech projects, um, COVID is obviously help them in the sense that people have gone even more online um, you know with e-commerce that's just that you know just even though it was already a, a massive space it's just really exploded over the last 
two years. Um, and there's even that's forecast to grow even more as is buy now, pay later and, and so forth. And even the, with the love chain, social media, that's um, people are looking for alternatives in social media. Um, social media has become a lot more niche, um, a lot more focused on specific areas. And we uh, and that's what we're, what we're focusing on with, with the love chain. So we feel that COVID, post COVID, and, and and what the future holds for the three businesses I'm involved in is 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 very bright. Great. Hard question. What's the biggest learning you've um, you've had since you become a business owner? Um, I think. I look. I think being my background in corporate law um, and a lot of the work I did was very much um, working closely with various divisions of a company or with that client, with the client's company, sorry, um, really put me in good stead of having my own businesses in the sense of when you have your own business, especially when you're, you're starting out, you need to be, you need to wear all hats. Um, you need to be, you know, you need to be across the couch, you need to be across marketing, business development, um, HR, um, legal, obviously for me. But um, there's, you need to really, I suppose, the challenge is to to, to get that right balance and being able to um, make sure that you um, are across all those things. But also, I suppose, another challenge was when you are in. Um, uh, I suppose with, in, with with law, you're expected to bear across various things. And I think when you're in business, you need to be able to delegate and be able to um, really allow people to take the reins and, and, and just go with it and, and entrusting them to and putting confidence in them to be able to do that. And so it lessens your burden because... If you're trying to do everything, then you're not. The business isn't going to grow, um, and you're going to be too much just entrenched into it. Um, and you need to then you need to be able to let go a bit and just let things flow and happen, and 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 hopefully let the business flourish. Great advice. Finding the right people is, is what it's all about. Yeah. So a couple of quick fire questions. Um, when, it, when you think about the word successful, who's the first, first person that comes to mind? I'll probably say my father. Um, my father, my godfather. Um, they're two people that I see as being close to me and both very successful in their own rights. Um, both, um, you know, the, 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 the traditional immigrant story, coming here with little or you know, not speaking English and so forth, but being able to... Um, 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 create their own um, successful businesses, and and you know in their in their each different different very tip, different types of business, but have been very successful in um, in in, in um, building um, businesses that have been around for forty plus years, um, but also allowed their families then to 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 build off those successes as well. Fabulous. I'm getting some really interesting interesting answers to that one. Um, yesterday, I had a uh, uh, who who talked about his his wife, um, yeah, managing a house and doing a part time job. And the day before, I had a, a fellow who said Tom Cruise, which really surprised me. But when you think about yeah, interesting enough, you know, yeah. you know, a career of forty plus years and the number of people you know, the, um, you know, he employs and everything else, it's, it's been some, it's a very interesting question. Um, are you a reader? Top three business books, podcasts, business blogs, biographies, leaders you'd recommend to, to the audience? Um, to be honest, you don't have time to read. Um, <laughs> um, um, and it's really uh, what I what I do uh, read is really more um, blogs and um, uh, yeah, around the M&A space, um, yep. BC space and the tech space. Um and then they're really just things that I subscribe to either through LinkedIn or just different um, uh, platforms that either we we deal with in in the various businesses. And then obviously have some sort of newsletter or publication that they produce. Um, so yeah, that's really that's what my 
my time's taken up with, and then obviously yeah. some more journals and that. But yeah, that's nothing too exciting that will get yeah. every, anyone excited about. Yeah, having I have a law degree, so I sort of get that. Yeah. <laughs> Any last um, piece of advice or parting words to people who listen? Um, I think you, you hear this often, but if you really believe in something, go for it. Don't let people hold you back. Um, don't take no as an answer. You need to really be, if you want something to happen um, and you want it to be successful, you need to really go for it. And um, um, you need to be like, basically like a dog at a bone and just, just, just whatever it takes to get there, just do it. And don't, don't be afraid of people saying no. Um, Cause we've like, especially what we're doing with the tech stuff, um, you know, had you know people and things people around the world saying oh it's fantastic great blah blah, blah. then you obviously get people saying oh it's don't understand or don't mm. think it's going to be great or successful or whatever it might be but that really just drives you more to 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 to, to be successful and to make it actually happen and so I think um, that's that's the main um, main main thing and also be um, be be true to yourself and don't 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 bullshit just just be be who you are and 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 you and work hard and you 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 know be determined and you can you can get there. Fabulous. Yeah. You know, I'm just thinking. You know, um, I really wish I'd started this. What I'm doing now with you, uh, when we did that technology, but you know, 20 years ago, the lessons I've been learning just from these these conversations are phenomenal. Yeah. Great. It's the end of the interview. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Jonathan. 